Hello everybody, welcome to this special Sunday Family Arts. My name is Austin Kwasinski and today we are going to make some colorful bird puppets inspired by the work of Rocky the Rock. And if you guys don't know, his exhibit is currently at the Reach Gallery. It's highly recommended. You guys check it out. It's really something to see in person. And you can come visit all the wonderful folks at the Reach while you're at it. Uh, while you're there, you can pick up one of these culture kits. And that's going to have all the tools and materials that we're going to be using for today's demonstration. And we're going to be making these bird puppets. I don't have the actual cardboard thing to pull up the, the birds because we're going to be using that for today's demonstration. But we're going to be making one today. So let's uh, dive into it and let me show you all the materials that we're going to be using. So... We're gonna have this uh, paper cut out here. Don't worry, the holes are already gonna be punched in uh, on the back as you can see. So we're gonna actually design our bird from here. Uh, the kits have glue and scissors, so you don't have to worry about that kind of stuff. And also this cardboard handle, this is gonna be uh, used to actually control how the bird flaps its wings. Uh, there's some crayons that come in the kit, but you guys are more than welcome to use any materials that you would like. So pencil crayons, felt, uh, you name it doesn't have to be limited to these three colors but for today's demonstration I'm just gonna use those also we have uh, three pieces of string I know one is longer than the other so as you can see so these will be for the two wings and then the longer one will be for the middle and then also we're gonna have some uh, beads here so make sure that the string that you're using is gonna fit inside the hole of the beads uh, so we don't have any problems there and then also as a little bit of a bonus we have these feathers here so the feathers we can go crazy and we can glue them onto our wings and stuff and really add some flair to our birds alrighty so let's get started so what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna use my trusty scissors and I'm gonna start to cut out some of these shapes here and the reason why I'm gonna cut it out first because we're gonna have both the front and the back that we need to actually color so I'm just going to make sure that I'm going along this line, getting as close as I can to an actual line here, like so, cut out this shape, I think I might cut out this back shape here. You could even use... Uh, traditional uh what's it called traditional materials like acrylic or watercolor even because the paper is actually so thick uh which would be really nice so it doesn't even have to be strictly the crayons like so so we're just going to cut these edges like so I'll pull them out if we can just not to be super perfect but There's always something really satisfying about cutting into really thick paper and getting these nice, nice perfect cuts. There you go. And then the last one here. There you go. So we have this one. We can get rid of all our scraps of paper. We don't need those anymore. Yeah, I highly encourage to uh, pick up these kits. Uh, they have everything you need, so you don't even need any additional supplies, only if you choose to, uh, which are super great. Um, and yeah, and even so, like um, you could totally draw these out on your own if you wanted to. But it's really nice to have the kit because it has everything in it that you already need. You're not going to be fussing over getting all the supplies because it's all going to be included. So let's cut these out. So I'm going to make sure that I'm not cutting this flap right away because we're going to actually use that for later. So we want to make sure we keep that intact. And again, we're going to cut, cut the wings. I like to start on the right coming to the left. I think the curves of the ends of the wings here makes it a little bit easier to cut. So. I'm going from this way. It's a little, little less natural, but you can let me know if it feels better on the other end. I, th I think I like it this way more. All right. Last but not least, get this one. 
All right, so get rid of all those extra spaces. We don't need that anymore. And last but not least, we have the main body. All right. So what I always encourage, um, if you don't exactly know what you're gonna color in right away, and especially since we're only gonna have one copy of this, uh, get out a scrap piece of paper and you can color and design uh, almost sketch uh, and see something that you like beforehand before you actually uh, dive in and start designing on the main pieces of paper uh, which will be really nice because you can experiment and try different things see what you like and if there's one that stands out to you the most you can kind of go from there I always have students are so eager to get uh, get drawing and coloring right away and sometimes they don't like what they end up getting and they want a new piece of paper and stuff so to avoid that hassle, definitely you can try sketching on paper, see what kind of pattern or design that you like and you're gonna go with, and that'll give you a better idea in the long run as far as actually seeing what we like. All right, so we got this cut out. So now what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna color this and we gotta make sure that we color both sides of the actual image. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start to design I'm gonna do this like crazy wave pattern. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make different colors for each each pattern here. Let's go a little bit like this. And then on the bottom one we'll do like this. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna color this in first just so I can see on the other side and try to match that as best as I can. Uh, a good way to do this or to see where you've kind of colored beforehand if you want to get a matching pattern is to use sort of landmarks to see see whereabouts that you've already kind of put your lines and I'll show you that in just a second. So if I flip this over you know I can kind of see where that where that line starts but also I'm looking at seeing where this shape kind of fits on this side so there's not going to be a line on the other side but we're going to use that kind of line as a as a guide to kind of fill in it's not maybe it won't be perfect but that's okay so filling in these colors here get that orange So, and I think it's gonna have a purple belly like this. All right, so what I was talking about earlier, you know, we have our landmarks, we can kind of flip it over a little bit just to kind of get our starting points here. And then I can see that landmark's gonna be kind of around there. And then what I wanna do is kind of follow that over. So I'm gonna see that hole is right there, right? I'm gonna make sure it's a little bit above the hole, right? So I'm gonna go down and around. So down and around. Something like that. And that way when you flip it over, you can kind of see where that's happening. And with right here, we can use that as well. Use that as our starting point. There's also an imaginary line right here. So what we can do see that it goes above that line a little bit it goes above it goes below it's not going to be perfect but it will help you try to get some consistency on both sides all right i think we'll speed up the process we'll put in the blue really quickly where's that blue going Yes, so that kind of fits right along there. And at the beak, oh, we forgot to fill in this little part. So there is a little bit of orange on that on that beak part. So let's make sure we leave enough room for the orange to be there. All right. So we have our orange. So we know that there's just gonna be a little bit of space for the purple belly, like so. 
and then for the back here, like that. All right, so we have it colored on both sides. So now it's time to do the wings itself. And the same thing, I'm just gonna follow the pattern of these wings here. And again, you can design it totally different from how I'm doing it, which will make your own creation unique and different. So I highly recommend that. And so this one can fit like that. All right, so now we start to color. And what's good about this and this wing doing this pattern here is we do have the landmarks for each of the ends of the wings. So we can use that and we can copy that on the other side. So I'll be a little bit easier to try to get consistency. There we go. Color in that blue. All right. Do orange one more time. Also, what's a great thing about this pattern is separating your colors. So having the orange on either side, it's gonna add a little bit of variety instead of having it all orange together. Switch things up a bit. All right. So we have that colored in and now we can flip it on myself here so we can actually go from here since this is going to be the bottom we can actually go backwards like so and again I'm just using these as landmarks it's okay if it's not exact but something like that will do again let's color this in that purple it's nice about using crayons is that you can quickly block in color I guess you can do the same with felts too but crayons is a underappreciated medium Not always get the brightest colors but you can block in colors really fast there's something nice about that there we go All right, so we're just gonna repeat this process and do the same thing for the other wing, just to make sure that we're matching the consistency. Yeah, we can use this wing as a reference if we so choose. Okay, I'm gonna keep it pretty consistent here. Let's go this way. Something like that. All right, let's fill this guy in. Just switching colors on the fly. All right, do orange one more time on this one. Kind of nice having the blue like right in the middle. The rest is surrounded by the purple and the orange there. All right, let's flip that guy over, and again, same thing. Do this like wave pattern. Follow the the contour of the wing shape itself, which is leading our design choices. All right. Last but not least, we'll be almost done the coloring here. And we move on to actually assembling our bird puppet. If you want to, you can assemble it uh, first and then put the feathers on or you can put the feathers on right now and then assemble it. I think I'm going to assemble it first just because uh, that way we'll get everything together and then we can just quickly 
pop on the feathers afterwards. Especially with that hole being so small, we don't want the feathers kind of blocking it and trying to put it all together. It'd be a little bit of a hassle. So, all right, so now we got everything colored and set up and ready to go. So what we're gonna do actually is there's a little bit of a dotted line here, as you can see. We're gonna fold that in on itself like this and make sure that we're folding along those lines. You run your nail along it just to get a nice uh, sharp edge if you want. Then I'm gonna do the same thing for the other side, like so. Yeah, run my nail on it just so you, it's a nice sharp edge. And now, so for this guy here, what we're gonna do is gonna have Kind of shape the wings and they're going to be these guys are going to be facing this way so one's going to be different so you're having your wings kind of face this direction here so as long as you can see that what we're going to do is we're going to actually get our out our glue stick and glue that onto the line so get that nice and covered you can even put a little bit on here too if you so choose and then along that dotted line get this as flat as possible something like that you can even push it along this edge here perfect something like that and we're gonna do the same thing for the other side so what we can do is just kind of match as you can see try to match that along should be some somewhere around there it's okay if it's not perfect but Oops, kind of lowering it a little bit. All right, what we can do is pull this up a little. Make sure that's nice and flat. Now, we actually have our bird shape, as you can see, locked and loaded. All right, so now, so the fun part is we gotta actually assemble this and put it together. So we're gonna have the middle one going like this and then the two ends as well so what I suggest to do is we're gonna actually run this through and make sure my little beads don't go anywhere so let's let's keep them here there you go so we're gonna run these through like so just make sure that end is nice and small I've never been great at this, so hold on. Just wet it a little bit, just so we can feed that through that hole there. There we go. All right, so we have that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna tie a little bit of a knot, just so it doesn't go anywhere. Hopefully you guys can see this. So knot around once. Then I'm going to pull it up as close to the edge as I can. Tie it as much as I can. One, two, just make sure we get that knot nice and tight so that when once it tries to fit through the bead, the knot won't be too big and it will not go anywhere. Pun intended. All right. Just feeding this through as many times as we can. Hopefully that's making a little sense. All right, let's see. All right, so we can test that, see if it's gonna stay, which it looks like it is. That is not going anywhere, as you can see, which will be really nice. So what we can do now is run it through the middle here. And that's gonna control the first wing. And we're just gonna tie it onto here, like 
like so. So I'm just going to leave a little bit of room through the loop. And for the younger ones at home, and if this is a little difficult, get your uh, parent or guardian to help you with this process just so it's a little bit smoother. But you might have the advantage because you have the, the smaller fingers to work with. All right. Let's do it this way here. Loop that once through. Make sure I hold. Something like that. Okay, cool. That's something like that. So let's do the same thing for the other side. Again, I'm going to take one of these, kind of wet the end a little bit just so the string itself stays intact, ready to be threaded. There we go. All right. So again, we're going to tie <laughs> as many knots as we can to make sure that this sucker is not going anywhere. All right, that's where our knot wants to stay. So again, let's try to get it as close as to that original knot as possible. We can do it a couple times. That was a good one there. We'll maybe do four, four times just to be on the safe side. I'm trying to get to that original knot. I think I got it. There you go. Let's try one more time. Hopefully you guys can see this. There we go. Move this along the edge a little bit. All right, so let's try it. Let's test it out, see if that's gonna go anywhere. It does, so we wanna make sure that we try that one more time. Pull that through. And that's how you know that we need our knot to be a little bigger than that. All right. Keep making our knot as big as we can. I feel like two more times should do it. Oh, I kind of missed that one. Try to pull it all the way back. All right, I think that should be it. I don't think that's going anywhere. All right, so as you can see, we got that knot threaded. That's going to stay still. So let's feed this through the other wing. And now, so I punched these holes myself. So what I'm going to do is just going to make this a little bit more. The ones at home, you guys should already have your holes punched through. So don't worry about that. All right. Feed this through the other side from the bottom. And then again, we're going to go over this way. I'm going to turn it a little bit so we can actually see this guy and then what we're going to do here let's tie this knot one time all right and now so we have the base of it and so all we need is the actual controlling one so we're going to do the longer thread in your kit here again i'm just going to wet the wet the edge a little bit and twist it just so it stays intact so I can get this through. Oh, it came apart. Oh no, came apart a little bit. Let's try the other end. Let's see if this works. All right. Feed this through. A little better than I did. All right. So again, for this guy, we want to make sure that we get this knot in. The thread on my end here is coming a little bit apart, so I'm going to try to do this as quickly as possible so that we don't lose the actual threaded part. All right. So I'm going to make sure to tie this knot more times than you probably need to, but just to be on the safe side. All right. Okay, 
like trying to push it to the edge there. Yeah, we're gonna use that middle knot. I think it's the best one there. There you go. I think I think a few more ties. All right. I'm scared to test it and then lose it. Especially when the string was coming apart a little bit. See if I can make like one ultra big knot. All right, we can try try this before it goes away. All right, so that looks like it's a little bit not quite. It's almost there. So it's just going to keep doing this. There you go. I think this knot might have done it. Let's see. Okay, I don't think that's going anywhere. All right. So that being said, we're actually going to do this from the top. So we have this coming down like so. Uh, however way you want. I think it's this way. So we'll do it from the top here. Come on down, and then what we're going to do is we're going to tie it. Make sure to make that a little bit wet so we can thread it through without any issues. Yeah, it's coming up apart a little bit, so we're almost there. All right, so let's put this through. There you go. And then again, we're just going to tie a quick knot here. And again, make sure that it's big enough so that it's not going to burst through that hole. All right, so just do this multiple times. Again, try to keep it to the very edge. There we go, we're getting a nice bigger one. All right, I think we're almost there actually. Let's, let's try that, see if that works. All right, so there we go. So hopefully you guys can see, but when you pull this, the wings are actually gonna come up. So that's going to be a big wig span there. Hopefully you guys can see that. And then when we pull it up a little bit, the wings are going to come up like so. And then that way you get a bird that actually flies, which is really cool actually, because it's only controlled by the one, the one middle one there. So that is our completed bird puppet. And then afterwards uh, we have a little bit of time. So what we can do is we can just, I'll just quickly show you We can put some feathers on so we can, just glue glue areas of our piece, stick that on. And again, I'm not gonna go crazy with this, but just to show you for demonstration purposes, we can actually stick some feathers on and design it how we like. Again, your culture kit should have these. Just stick it on there. Try to make sure that's enough glue to support it do one here I'm kind of doing it randomly you can definitely uh, pick and choose a little bit more areas that you think will look best and we can switch colors something like that anyways you get the idea but we can actually cover it with feathers and then you have a working puppet like so and again, it's gonna be hard to show from a top-down angle. I can actually hold it like this, maybe. There you go, that might be better. All right, so you can pull it up and down like so. And it actually uses its wingspan, which is kind of neat. Alrighty, guys, I hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, again, you can pick up these culture kits at the Reach, and while you're there, definitely take a look at the Rocky the Rock exhibit. It's pretty spectacular, so I definitely encourage you guys to check it out on your own. Uh, that's it for me guys. I hope you enjoyed this one and I'll see you next time.